the fractal opening of the lotus flower floating on the primordial waters is the mythological origins of life described by the Egyptians. We begin, as all things do, with the word. The word is really a song, a musical score played between two rocks. The rocks begin a vibratory dance, growing, reaching, forming. The cymatic shape of the rock expressed through its geometric formation, dictating the hardness, luminosity, and overall species of rock. The combination of mineral elemental composition and its molecular arrangement dictate the rock's identity, sound providing the means by which it grows. The whirring of the earth shortly after its formation produced the earliest crystals, zircon, a symphony which is trapped by crystal formations who glow in harmony in tetragonal formations. Not long after, some 4.2 billion years ago, a weak magnetic field formed around the planet. However, the core did not form until some 3.5 billion years ago. Almost a billion years of unaccounted magnetic field around the Earth allowing a stable axis in which the core could form in the first place. Immediately following the core's formation and the ensuing magnetic field, organic life started. Soft crystals that held the musical energy inside them, dancing to the tune of Earth's magnetic buzzing. Single-celled microbes, only discernible from a crystal due to their independence. When the earth sighed, the microbe sighed. When the earth trembled, the microbe trembled. They were extensions of the same planetary processes that all other rocks are. Chemical interactions, energetic signals, magnetic fields, cymatic influences, And then the microbes had a sudden thought, a partner dance. A division and a fusion, two nuclei wrapping around each other, the first dance of life. Microbial multicellular partnerships followed cellular reproduction. A symbol familiar to us all the yin yang. Welcome to the Microscopic Esoterica. Single-celled organisms fused to form multicellular organisms a long time ago. Through intelligent decision-making, a cell could alter its own plasticity, change from a blob to an appendage, or a propeller, or a fin, or a flagella, or a skin, or a stomach, or a sensor, or a weapon. Roles are divided. Microbes composited and assigned functions and specialties. They merged the genetic coding so that their offspring could be one organism. Through the division of labor and the division of cells, a microbe redistributed its intelligence. The conscious and unconscious. The old digestive microbe no longer played out its role as a separate organism fused to another, but now as one in tandem with a directive microbe, which is the whole. Separate the microbe in two, and both parts will regrow, reproduce, and continue its life. The parts are greater than the whole. 
The parts connect their vibratory electricity together. That is the benefit of composite organisms. Hundreds of millions of years go by, this process expanding exponentially in scale and complexity. We have divided the different organisms into classes called kingdoms. Bacteria, archaea, protozoa, chromista, plantae, fungi, and animalia. Crystalline is the Eighth Kingdom, the parent genesis of the other Seven Kingdoms. The Seven Kingdoms are collectively called Life. They are combinations of one another, divided and refused over many millennia. A human person is made of multiple systems skeletal, muscular, nervous, endocrine, cardiovascular, lymphatic, respiratory, digestive, urinary, and the reproductive system. These systems were once individual microbes, or the predecessor to these systems were individual microbes, those same geometric microbes that fused together. The shape dictates its role. Each system of the human body is made of minerals. Boiled down further, it is primarily oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, calcium, and phosphorus. The elements themselves have geometric shapes. In no sense of the definition of life are those elements organic or living. Only together, through the language of shape and energy, do they obtain the status of life. A lung went from microbe to sac to lung to reduce the steps to its bare bones. Each organ and organ system are carefully designed by the microbes that compose it. There are invisible writings in the sky, drawings, aeons in the making. The epicyclic geocentric patterns have been repeated innumerable times. The constellations exert light and gravity, as subtle as a weaver's thread that is wound in and around, providing the schematics for a microbe. Behavior, shape, cycles, function, and biological processes are influenced by the stars, planets, sun, and moon. Celestial bodies push and pull on the microbial with invisible strings.
The esoteric practice of astrology works by the identification of celestial patterns on the microbial level. This level is then reflected back as a whole. The qualities associated with a lion are an expression of the lion constellation, imbuing all whose dominance this constellation rules. The lion itself is mirroring what existed long before it did. The star pattern, the astrological archetype or geometry of a lion. It was not the lion that the constellation was named for but the constellation that gave the lion its qualities through the evolution of epicyclic influence over billions of years, all taking place on the microbial. But that is a poor introduction into the complexity of the celestial function that can be mapped into geometric shapes. The birth chart of a microbe will reflect in its growth. That shape, the blueprint of the stars, follows the same march as the procession of the zodiac. If you can believe that eyesight is a light filter interpreting visions, then an emotion can be understood to be a projection of light, taking form physically in the facial features. Now all I've done was describe the body language communication in a roundabout way, but this will be important. Human personalities are equivalent to their emotions. When you are angry, you look angry. When you are sad, you look sad. When you look happy, you feel happy. Whether it is the attitude you are trying to force changing your emotions, or your emotions reflecting in your features, is the same. Emotions are not in a sort of personal ether, but are as much the mood of the body as the features they describe. For example, through the system of emotional types, the eyebrows can be understood to relate to ideas, thoughts, consciousness, opinion, logic, and ethics.
The eyes relate to desires, perceptions, extroversion, introversion, wants, visions of reality, the processing of information. The mouth relates to feelings, communication, voice, tone, needs, assertions of people, sensuality, and intuition. Each of the features in this physiognomic system can be divided into having four types, which is based on the contour of the feature. The four possibilities are joyful, sad, open, and quiet. The combination of the three features reveals the current relations, times, reality, and emotions of a person. It is like an oracle which describes the personality of someone. When we see someone's light projection, their facial expressions, we receive impressions. Their face, mood, and energy impresses onto our face like molding. This emotional type of someone changes based on their ideas, desires, and feelings. The face mimics from one archetype to the next, one set of emotions to the next, based on the ideas, desires, and feelings. The emotions someone displays the most is going to be their emotional type, as that is the contour their life and personality has shaped into the changes we go through in life. The I Ching, the I Ching, the canon of changes, the alteration of souls. This classic Chinese text contains the language of the universe, broken into 64 hexagrams, composed of two trigrams, each trigram a combination of three lines, either broken or whole, that describes a yin or yang quality. There are four arrangements of lines. In total, there are 64 situations in the I Ching, which accounts for every possible situation. 64 is a number found in DNA, computers, and even the game of chess. It is the tetrahedron.
The grid 64 tetrahedron is an infinitely expanding fractal structure. It's the only three-dimensional fractal structure which is repeatable inwardly and outward, described to be the most accurate representation of space and the universe. So the I Ching encodes even the 64 tetrahedron. It is a microscopic archetype breeder. Each facial feature of the emotional types can be assigned an I Ching line value. The eyebrows are the top two lines. The eyes are the middle two. And the mouth, the bottom two. The joyful features are whole over broken. The sad broken over whole. The open are double open lines and the quiet double closed lines. The situation of each hexagram can be used to understand the emotions, personality type, and the general caricature of a person, with no information other than a picture of their facial features. Every situation is described, therefore every emotion is covered by the I Ching emotional types. No matter what facial feature we wear, it is an I Ching hexagram. We naturally change over our life and through conversations or about our days reacting to the feelings, thoughts, and desires we have. It does not end there. Remember, the microbial reflects the stars. If an accurate birth chart is drawn of a person, the emotional type, and therefore facial features, and personality, can be mathematically deduced. The sun, moon, and planets play an intricate symphony one with geometric shape. There are qualities of each planet that influences the microbial and chemical. The moon will primarily preside over the personal inner self, the emotions and personality. The 360 degrees of a circle is divided by the number of hexagrams, 5.625. The degree difference between the moon or a planet with the sun is calculated. That number is divided by our 5.625, and then the number received between 0 and 64 will be the I Ching hexagram. That hexagram can be deciphered to produce the emotional type, contour of the facial features of the person in question. The planets may help add information to the changing emotional types of some faces they may commonly make, 
emotions they may feel, and situations which are accurate to someone. The part of humans that allow us to live are the billions of non-human microbes responsible for maintaining the health of the body. Without them, we would not exist. An imbalanced microbiome is responsible for cognitive, mental, developmental, physical ailments, and disease. Your personality is directly related to the particular microbes which are capable of releasing neurotoxins and connecting to muscle and tissues throughout the body. The gut is the primary nexus of health in the body, both physical and mental. The brain is the processing unit of the body, the cockpit, so to speak. The gut is the command center, the motherboard of the human body. The gut contains enough neurons to be a fully functioning brain in and of itself. Damage to the gut affects the brain in the head. In particular, it is damage to the microbes in the gut that affects the brain. Listen to your gut, gut instinct, trust your gut are terms we've all heard. Many emotions can be felt in the gut. Stress and anxiety can damage the gut, exposing the connection between who we are and how we feel and the physical manifestation of emotions. The ego and the self are psychological terms to describe a phenomenon of being, of existing as a self and a personality, a character, if you will. If mood and cognitive function and personality is directly influenced by microbes, perhaps we should start to think of ourselves as the collective of microbial intelligence that composes our body. The soul or ego of the body is the microbiome. We are not the heart pumping, nor the lungs moving oxygen to blood, nor the brain firing synapses, nor the musculature motor cortex, nor the digestive system processing food, nor the skeleton blood cell factory, nor the cellular mitosis that grows and repairs nor the skin suit, nor the hormone glands. We are none of those things. Those so-called background productions are outside of our immediate conscious control. They are not, however, outside the conscious control of microbes, who either support those systems or invade those systems, reacting and acting of their own volition, causing disease or maintaining homeostasis. An out-of-place stomach will realign itself with no directive of the ego of the human.
It is a curious observation that intention and willpower can have influence over the health of a body. Yet this influence is not guaranteed. If we can understand the ego or soul or self to be a collective consciousness projection of the microbiome, we are then able to communicate or utilize that microbiome, exerting a willful or intention-based change. The mood and personality can compound issues or benefits in the body. Living stressfully causes various hormones and other processes in the body to disrupt normal functions. Invasive, parasitic, and opportunistic microbes will exert their own influence, hacking that microbiome consciousness leading to poor health, mood changes, personality disorders, and severe mental illnesses. There will be times in your life where you do not feel like yourself. Something came over you. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't recall doing that. I can't explain my own actions. Strange psychological phenomena perhaps best explained through a dynamic and changing microbiome. We can now understand as an ego, a personality, a soul. These are in essence synonymous terms, consciousness and microbes ego and microbiome, soul and microbiome. The microbiome is accumulated from the moment of conception and beyond death in the form of decomposition, a process that is ongoing over the course of life. It is no coincidence that our placenta attaches to the gut, as opposed to the heart or the brain. A certain Qigong practice involves the cyclic breathing and circulation of energy through and around the stomach. Meditation on the navel. The chi furnace of the Dantian, the Manipura chakra, the solar plexus chakra. The conversion of resources into fire, into energy. The very production furnace that the body will ultimately use to recreate itself and build upon itself. The nutrients absorbed from the environment. You feel bad when you eat bad food. You feel good when you eat good food. This simple fact expands upon the idea that our gut microbiome is our self.
The goal of embryonic breathing is the formation of the elixir of life, an inner or internal equivalent to the philosopher's stone of alchemy. This pervasive concept of a transcendent formula to overcome death. To breathe deep into the stomach, deep into the self. Your level of consciousness and awareness is based on this oxygenation of the body and movement of the stomach. You black out without breath, you go unconscious. You become conscious with breath. When you space out, you are breathing less. When you choke and freeze up, you are breathing less. The term being grounded refers to the level of breath or consciousness you are maintaining. The more in your body, so to speak, the more present in the moment you are. The mind wanders into space when the breath does not go further than the head. the particular quality of intelligence that microbes exhibit, whose influence is decided by the forces of the geometry, frequency, and electromagnetism, the stars and resonance of the earth itself, can be passed down chemically or by means of the collective unconscious. The collective unconscious is a shared data system, a cloud or internet, if you will, of microbial intelligence and memory running on the same forces of geometry, frequency, and electromagnetism that bred their formation in the first place. Past life memory, reincarnation, spiritual connections to God or gods, enlightenment, kundalini, are connections to this microbial network described by different philosophical schools of thought, one that perhaps utilizes or is related to the same electromagnetism, the same astrological patterns, the same somatic influences, the same geometric formations described by the I Ching, by DNA, computers, the very same that lead to the quality of life we associate with organisms, and the fundamental building blocks of the universe the 64 tetrahedron. Within the 64 tetrahedron is the seed of life formation, the root of the flower of life, a sacred symbol that describes life. The splitting of the yin-yang, 
the cellular mitosis responsible for life. The formation of zygote to embryo makes the seed of life formation as cell forms from cell. Observe the fractal patterns of organisms, both microscopic and larger, formed by the microscopic. The radiolarian mineral skeleton. The star shape of the acantheria. The intricate spheroid of the Phaeodaria circozoa. The triangular and circular diatomic algae. The cells of the calcis spongy sponge. The six fold corals of the hexacorala. The morphology of pollen, such as the discoidea. The flower pattern of the clypeasters. The tripod of the Calocyclus radiolorians. The Pediastrum algae hexagrams. The radiolarian polycyteria. The tentacle monster of the Ascomycotes erysiphi. These and many more were illustrated by Ernst Haeckel. There is the pattern of antlers, of flowers, of lizards, crustaceans, seashells, sea dollars, fish, jellyfish, mold, fungi, bacteria, viruses, insects, scarabs, protozoa, octopi and squid, the honeycomb of bees, and so much more. Brain food looks like brains. Eye food looks like eyes. Bone food looks like bones. Heart food looks like hearts. Reproductive food looks like reproductive organs. Blood drinks looks like blood. Kidney food looks like kidneys.
stomach food looks like stomachs. We are our terrain, an extension of an ecosystem and the long evolution of microbes building organs, fruits, plants, organisms through patterns and systems of efficiency through composite formations and geometric minerals. The doctrine of signatures goes beyond food and organs. The doctrine of geometry is a more accurate description as microscopic fractal patterns impress upon interpretation of events and phenomena. The winged ball of eyes described as biblical angels is describing some form of microbial encounter. Visited by aliens or radiant larians. Haunted by ghosts or demons or neurotoxic mycotoxin mold. Deja vu or microscopic memory. Connection to an object, person, or place, or microbial harmony. Foresight or predictive microbial data patterns. Water scrying or electromagnetic sensitivity. Magic talismans or antimicrobial chemicals. Witchcraft or fungal influence. Dreams or microbial visions. Fertility farming rituals or appealing to microbial forces. Warding evil spirits or antimicrobial medicine. holy water and holy light, or purging fungal infections. Visions of God or connection to microbial consciousness network. Unclean and evil or microbial diseases. Silver kills werewolves, or is it simply antimicrobial? Garlic keeps vampires away, or is it describing antifungal properties? Cursed 
or infected. Ectoplasm or slime mold. Possessed or microbial hacking. What is being picked up on? What is being impressed is microbial awareness of other microbial events that is then described by the collective ego or soul best explained through methods like personification. Meditation as a source of enlightenment is as old as mankind. The deep stages of meditation is a melting of the ego, a dissolving feeling wherein the self seems to distribute, expand, and become infinitely small. The sense is hard to describe. It is the entering into the microscopic consciousness, the self, and the collective altogether. From the experiences of meditation, humans saw symbols, intricate and delicate patterns. These would form the basis of the sacred symbology and sacred geometry. The mandala, the vesica piscis, the mandorla, the flower of life, the labyrinth, the metatron cube, The Kabbalah Tree of Life. The Vesuvian Man. The Kundalini Seducius. DNA. The I Ching itself was found in nature, in turtles and dragons. The Star of David. The Eye of Horus. The head of Ganesh. The, the Ouroboros. The Hamsa. The Pentagram. The sigils and signs, motifs which can summon the gods and demons, the microbial forces, the pine cone, a reference to the pineal gland, the tree of life bearing the pine cone, the Christmas tree, which is symbiotically friends with the microscopic mycelium of the Amanita muscaria species, a source of intense meditative experience.
whether through natural meditation or psychedelic experience. The visuals lend themselves to microscopic fractal patterns, the same ones which can be explained as forms of microbes and the forms the microbes are based off and are influenced by. Symbols and shapes, whether on a paper, a piece of jewelry, a gemstone, a snowflake, a crystal, a flower, or a building interact with the microscopic world around it. On top of the resonant frequency of certain buildings, auditoriums, megalithic sites, pyramids and ziggurats, cathedrals and temples, is the doctrine of geometry impressing certain microbial reactions. It is comparable to the emotional types of a face built by and composed by microbes and cells which project the emotions. Shapes too project energetic qualities which can be understood as affecting microbes the same way the pattern of stars affect them. As with microbes, there is no part of us that would exist without stones, minerals, and metals. They are integral to organic life. They are what came before organic life and evolved through chemical changes into microbes to diversify. They grow in shapes and geometries. The first gods worshipped by man were stones, megalithic dolmens and menhirs, temples of astromicrobial patterns. The gods are still worshipped in stone temples and cathedrals. Blocks of stone make the altars. Effigies of stone and mineral paints, or else digital glass, project the shapes and emotional types of their personified gods. Gold as the incorruptible sun god, who exhibits the same doctrine of geometry and signatures in the form of the qualities of the god. The sun gods are worshipped as gold metal. They are sacred gods, holy light, energetic, unchanging, and creative beings. All can be said of gold, whose malleability and rust resistance allows for the creation of many objects. Silver is cool and moonlike, a goddess of the night, soft and malleable as well, a wife to the sun god, purger of evil and reflector of light, just as silver is.
Iron, the god of war, the red planet Mars, the blood and anemia, the war and vitality. Copper, Venus, the goddesses of love and fertility, the morning star and the light bringer, antimicrobial, conductive of electricity, protection against evil. Lead, Saturn, the god of time, Lead is white like the bones and teeth it can destroy. It slows or speeds the aging process. Tin, Jupiter, chief of the gods. Preserver, not easy to oxidize. Supports the other gods the same way tin is used as an alloy with metals like copper to produce bronze. Mercury, the god Mercury, the Quicksilver, fast like the orbit of the planet, the god of knowledge and messenger, the poisoning hallucinations and dementia of the Mercury poisoning the visions or messages of the gods. The geometry of a structure on top of its particular chemical composition makes the difference between carbon diamond and carbon graphite. There is a twofold component to the animistic qualities of stone, metals, and crystals. One is their own intelligence. The Earth has a soul, whether that soul is electric, magnetic, energetic, or otherwise a combination of forces. Stones, which are required for life, are separated from organic life in our category based on qualifying factors. Notice there is a line which was put. This line is useful in certain fields, but does not morphologically change what a stone is and its own life and intelligence. Proteins, for example, chains of amino acids, are the building blocks of a living organism, but they themselves are not alive. Amino acids bind and fit together through the geometry of chemicals, and that their function is largely determined by their shape. All life is built this way. The introduction and combination of molecular shapes binding and mixing together. Organisms are stones used in various ways, dancing together in patterns. A stone is not a single, large molecule, but like all things, composed of billions of molecules together, geometrically linked. Stones have been used as living projections from the beginning of time. Man's first temples, talismans, and symbols were stones. 
a rock which was given the personality by the projection and reflection of the self onto the stone. The arrangement or carving of a stone alters its role, just like a protein, just like a microbe. Man constructed stone temples, projects that extended beyond the life of the original planners. They did not build for themselves. They built for the future and for the stone god itself, for the earth soul. Stone temples were often built to reflect and record the stars, the celestial bodies. When the geometry of orbits, figures of constellation, cycles of sun, moon, and planets, the same complex shapes can be traced. Venus, eclipses, equinoxes, solstices, caput draconis, the dragon's head. It is the path of the sun crossing the path of the moon in the northern sky. Cauda Draconis, the dragon's tail, where the sun crosses the path of the moon in the southern sky. The great dragon in the sky, through the doctrine of geometry, formed the snake. This essential orbital period existed long before the snake did, before the Kundalini. However, no life would exist at all without the orbits of the celestial bodies. It is the shape expressing its emotional type onto the microbial. What came first, the snake or the stars, the lion constellation or the lion? Man's description of the lion constellation is not born of artistically styling the night sky, but a discovery that certain geometric patterns invoke a particular quality which was then observed in their own lives and the world around. This microcosmic signature was identified by the builders of Avebury and other Neolithic sites, by the worshippers of the Naga, the snakes of Mesoamerica, the world serpent, Apophis, the Medusa, the Charbidus, the Leviathan, the dragon. Man's first religion, a philotry, snake worship. A worship done in stone, music, dance, and with living snakes. Man dwelt with snakes underground in caves and the pits they first built their homes in. The mythological nexus of spiritual experience is found in the pineal gland, the brow chakra, the so-called third eye. This hormone gland produces serotonin and converts it to melatonin. Its function as an eye is accurate as the gland is stimulated by light and dark. It merely has no optical lens in which to produce images like an eyeball. This section of the brain was among the earliest to evolve in mammalian ancestors. It is a part, in fact, taken from reptiles, our snake brain. This gland is regulated by the sun and moon, the day and night cycle, which forms the draconis nerves in the sky, the head and tail of the dragon.
The pineal gland gets its name from its shape, which is a pine cone, a symbol used by many ancient cultures to represent spiritual enlightenment, all of which bear strong and important snake themes. It is the snake which tempts the first humans in the garden. It is the Promethean stealing of the fire story recognized by all ancient religions in some form. The snake tells the humans to eat of the fruit of the tree to receive enlightenment. This enlightenment is represented by a pine cone. The tree is often a pine tree, though it does vary based on geographical region. The pine tree, the Christmas tree, the world tree, the tree of knowledge, the snake tree is connected by the microbial fungi, Amanita muscaria, whose fruit, its mushroom, has its stored knowledge in the form of a psychedelic and hallucinogenic compound. And we understand those to work based on the chemical and geometry formation interacting with the GABA receptors located in the limbic system of the brain, where the thalamus, amygdala, pituitary, and pineal gland are. Your reality and perceptions, day and night rhythms, hormones, memory, and emotions are all functions of the limbic system affected by the neurotransmitter fruit of the fungus, mycorrhizal to the pine tree, whose symbolic feast day is the winter solstice or December 25th. Notice the layering of signatures and geometries that connect from one theme to the next. Man's earliest and most recognizable stories are religious texts and mythological tales. Before the invention of writing, these stories were passed down orally by way of song. In order to memorize great lengths of work, music is used as a mnemonic device to access the memory link of an entire script. This skill was widely employed by humans who could not rely on writing and so stories formed. A single song that could contain history, lore, geography, astronomy, philosophy, and ethics, plant knowledge and fantasy, romances, origins of a people, and the creation of the world. It explained the weather and the land itself, personifying and zoomorphing the different characters and forces of nature into an elaborate play. These plays, while the languages were simple at the time, a single word could have many meanings and was used in various forms as puns, entendres, alliteration, anything to create that musical lyricism humans naturally find valuable and fascinating. They would have called it the equivalent to spelling, to cast or invoke a spell. The spell was the story, the hymns of pre-written religious texts. It is why all of them are songs, all our holy books from around the world. Although humans divided their labor and skills, the fields of study were not separated the way we think of it today. The astronomers, the builders, the smiths, the doctors, the shamans, or priests, 
Those respective fields were all part of a single phenomenon, which was existence. Astrology was as relevant to the blacksmith as it was to the priest. The transmutation of metal to object was spiritual. Weapons were always mythologized to come from the gods, along with most other inventions. Furthermore, encoded into the ancient song tales was a detailed outline of diseases, medicines, calendars and seasons, natural disasters, farming techniques, strategy and morality, and most interestingly, intelligence, microbial science. The rituals described in ancient texts, still performed in various ways to this day, are evidence of microbial influence, invocations of the spiritual, divine aspects of the universe. The description of the gods, of death, religious experience, of disease, and all the supernatural, unexplained, paranormal phenomena, the rites of spirit and land, the connection to the earth soul. We can see the ancient microbial science at work by reviewing religious texts. In Leviticus chapter 14, we see the infection of skin and house was to be handled by the priest. Punishment and a guilt sacrifice were offered to remediate the infectious mold. In the Rig Veda, we see the role of the priest as being similar to a laborer. Only their job was to encourage the spirits to improve the yield and health of the workers. In Greek rituals such as the Thesmophoria, a pig's decaying carcass is spread over the newly planted crops to gain the favor of the spirits. In Native American farming techniques are the Three Sisters the triple moon goddess motif found in the ancient world all over. In tandem with the stars, three plants are selected for their beneficial relationship called companion planting. The twelve labors of Heracles describe the procession of the zodiac and each associated labor is a dual meaning of plant and toxin and the usability and medicinal value of them as they relate to their dominant planet and constellation, the doctrine of geometries. Some of the earliest documented rituals come in the form of brewing beer and wine. Man's ultimate claim to civilization began as a way to settle down long enough to grow holy crops such as rice, corn, and other grains. These were then placed in water along with other fruits and herbs, and the dances and rituals would begin. They encouraged the spirits to boil their mixtures a magical process that would yield alcohol, a cleansing, a purifying, and communal drink. The most important factor in using resources and acquiring nutrients when storage would otherwise be impossible long term was fermentation. These spirits were yeast and they exist in the air at all times. Their methods of fermentation rituals were reliable enough for humans to survive the dawn of civilization. Related rituals include rain dances, a stimulation of the inseminating rains to fertilize the ground. The invocation of rain is done through the incidental spore release of fungi whose microbial sporification of the air allows for evaporated water to bind in the atmosphere, forming clouds and then rain. Studies reveal fungus intentionally influences their own spore release for ideal rain conditions when they need it. 
men tapped into this ability through their rituals and invocation of the spirits, the microbes themselves. Songs, talismans, patterns, architecture, rituals, belief, prayer, meditation, dance, all the rites that form a religion exist to influence the good microbes and discourage the bad microbes. The lack of microscopy did not stop men from understanding that intelligent and conscious beings existed. They called them the gods, angels, demons, monsters, curses, holiness, the divine. We see many instances of correct applications of antimicrobial activities as well as an understanding that the earth's soul can be communed with for advantage, atoned for to save from punishment, and meditated on for visions. They then correctly identified the astronomical signatures. We see this in the zodiacal implications of all religious texts and mythologies and architecturally in their constructions. The concept of good and evil, holy and unholy, divine and demonic, is simply explained as that which is beneficial and healing, and that which is harmful and decomposing. This war occurs on the microscopic level at all times, in all places of the world, and is impacted by the state of the sun, moon, planets, and stars whose influence can range from solar activity, moon phases, planetary electromagnetism, and light wave patterns of the constellations. Spagyrics, Ayurveda, and many other practices link health, body types, and medicinal value of plants to be related to the time of day and time of year, as the signature of geometries affects the potency of chemicals, as well as an individual's body chemistry, which can change from person to person through the microbiome. The microbiome itself again is impacted by the growth influence of the stars. Knowing our personality, the ego and soul of an individual is determined by the health of the microbiome. We can understand how astrological motifs play their factors through the subtle invisible strings born from the schematics of the constellations. The canon of changes helps to document the changing microbiome of someone and a situation, place, or event. The knowledge of this ancient text was found in nature, representing an early understanding of the microbial, geometric, and DNA activity. The microbial contains many varying species across multiple kingdoms of life and of many personalities, harmonies, and purposes. When we can understand all things to be built by the microbial and the consciousness itself of both man and earth is constructed by the microbial, we can understand why ancient mythology personified these forces of nature from disease to rain. The interrelationship between the stars and the spirits, or the microbes, forms the cosmic war described by all religions. When the word was written down, the songs stopped evolving and interpretations led to the abstraction of those very ideas. However, much of the microbial science remains, if only instinctual and accidentally, as God became a figure outside of time and space rather than the spirits of the air, earth, and water, the microbiome of an environment.
The human microbiome is more than a body. Your environment and your body have been interacting since before you were born. Were we to have a vision only of microbes, we would see people as concentrated microbes, with a greater aura of microbes floating about and on the surface of our objects, clothes, and homes. When we touch, we exchange microbes with an object or person. When we eat, we introduce new microbes. When we breathe, we bring in and expel microbes. We grow attached to our things, sentimental to our objects, as our microbiome extends to our bed, clothes, office, room, car, shoes, everything just as other microbes move in and colonize those fairy objects. Certain objects contain antimicrobial particles and other particles can harm us. These microtoxins damage or help us based on their particular geometry and chemical properties and how they interact with the microbes in and around us. Gold, copper, and silver are considered holy and used in sacred effigies and talismans because their particles can kill microbes that would otherwise harm us. The same can be said for plants and herbs. That which is holy is antimicrobial to the microcosmic antagonists of humans. Memory, scent, eyesight, hearing, touch, taste, disgust, repulsion, love, anger, security. These senses work based on how they make us feel, the response to microscopic or patterns of light waves or sound waves. A positive or negative association is built through experience and microbial memory. These can be observed in the mimicry of emotions or facial expressions as we naturally shape ourselves through interactions of our environment and experiences. We feel possessive of the things we claim as our own, whether it is an object or geographical location, or otherwise a concept or ideology. Our microbiome stakes a claim and attachment through shared symbiosis is therefore perceivable as a microbial connectivity. But what happens when a group of people form a greater microbiome? Humans that share an environment, food, practices, and beliefs, language and history are called culture. Agricultures are some of the earliest cultural heritages. The word can be broken into two parts, agrarian cult, farming cults, the cultivation of land. The ritual practice of influencing the ecosystem for a specific outcome. In this case, the earliest human civilizations growing crops. The difference in cultures that arose around the world can be best explained by the alternate manipulation of threads and the rocks, the weaving of fibers and the shaping of stones. The identity of a human, and more broadly a culture, is obtained through the specific usage of its natural resources and from that the belief of those resources. The building style and choice of material, the clothing worn, jewelry crafted, paints and ornamentation implemented, carved effigies and fabric dyed. This identity of inorganic material that allows for a person or group to project their beliefs and individuality is much like how proteins, minerals, and metals are required for their organic life to exist. 
from a far enough distance, a human settlement is indiscernible from another type of culture, incidentally bearing the same terminology as human culture, that being a culture of microbes. Through the kaleidoscopic principle of light, which allows for us to view objects as a single entity rather than its composition of a billion molecules, we can understand ourselves as microbe constructs that reflect our cultural individuation of putting things together and deriving meaning from that. In simpler terms, human culture is a culture of microbes building things in which to project and communicate with other forces and cultures of microbes. This is understood in the construction of temples, the worship on an altar, the sacrifice of an animal, the praying for prosperity, the forgiveness of crime, the karmic nature of intention and manifestation, in short, the spiritual microbial influence. In part 15, a twofold intelligence and animism of stones are described. The second quality of living stones is found in the microbiome occupying that stone. Primarily, this will come in the form of fungus. Many hundreds of millions of years ago, fungus tapped into volcanic rock through its hyphae, digesting nutrients and splitting rock to pieces. With enough time, the rocks were ground to fine particles. This was the first soil. Fungus are capable of breaking down microscopic particles of metals and can occupy stone, brick, wood, clay, and any material used by man. Very quickly in human religions did man find communion with God through stones, specifically areas of closed off stone temples, caves, cathedrals, any darkened room. The stone is further inoculated with microbes, giving it a vibrance and intelligence, which undoubtedly played a role in man's use of any rock or mineral in their worshipping practice. The statuary, altar, or effigy is prayed to for generations of priests, cultivating a deeper religious experience, and therefore a greater microbial presence, hence relics. A sunless altar used for aggression, power, and curses will naturally have a more virulent and toxic microbiome. An altar dedicated to peace, meditation, and healing will be kept clean. The difference of a sacrificial blood god, a sorceress or a witch's abode, and a holy, purified place for health. Here the microcosmic war can be identified in the nature of every religion's intentions. You may use a demonic power or curse to destroy your enemies offering blood to the stone gods whose liquid would feed a microscopic culture, and thereby allow for the production and spore dispersal containing those signature of violence and intention back into the microbiome of the zealots who invoke that microbial god or spirit. For healing, religious might try to breed an antidote microbe or else use antimicrobial chemicals and intentions to purge the demonic curses. In these cases, symbols, metals, plants, and offerings of water and grains will be presented to encourage a healthy, positive, and beneficial to humans, microbial god or spirit. Building a temple helps to reduce the variability of microbes as a contained environment limits what natural microbes float around it. Purification rituals such as a blessing of water is common, or a hand sign is performed to superstitiously ward off unwanted microbe spirits from that sacred space.
This is done for homes too. Prayers, signs, wind chimes, garlic and dether plants, symbols and incantations, or statues of gargoyles or saints are placed around the house to ward off unwanted microbial spirits. The most powerful of all the senses in the animal kingdom is the sense of smell. Different animals have evolved different specifications on how or what that sense is best suited for. Smell is explained by odor receptors picking up molecules and microbes which trigger a neuron response, letting the brain and body know what the smell is. The brain is not the only reactive system to smell. Smell can be felt in the gut and will be referred to as instinct. Smell can be associated with other concepts of physiology aside from the perception of odors. Concepts of fear, danger, intent, adrenaline, energy, being watched, infections, purity, and more can all be felt from smell alone. The receptors are interpreting a range of molecules and microbes from various sources. This is a skill which can be trained. Smell is the strongest link to memory humans are capable of obtaining, stronger even than music. The microbial recognition of an odor is lifelong and it can even give vision and hallucinations of the past, similar to past life or reincarnation phenomena described by some people. It is the microbes which have experienced that before, the cycle of death and life retaining its memory through intelligent microbes. Smell as a source of precognition and divination and instinct is perhaps best understood as the interpretation of intent that a molecule has, translated by the microbiome in your body or otherwise your soul. Something that is putrid and dangerous or harmful or toxic is religiously thought of as being evil or demonic. It is an unholy odor. The odors are described as being the evil spirits themselves. They are invisible, other dimensional beings which give off odor. In truth, it is microbes which are the other dimensional beings, in the dimension of the microscopic. Again, the attribution of an intelligent force is correct personified only to better comprehend that which is invisible, yet still sensed through smell. Notable is the role of perfume and incense, which was assigned to religious priests, nuns, monks, and shamans. The purifying smells are holy and cleanse evil spirits. The molecules of the chemicals derived from these plants and spices cause the death of bad microbes.
we can now understand the popular saying, cleanliness is close to godliness. This comes about in the Hebrew and other ancient religions, the vernacular of being unclean. Unwashed is a moral and spiritual issue, and is immutably described physically as being an illness or infection of some kind. To clean oneself of bad microbes is to be more aligned to God and the Holy. No scent is the same on each person. A perfume will smell different on every individual as it interacts with body chemistry and the microbiome. Smell is interpreting geometry and chemicals through receptors. Every sense is a unique way to experience the microbial geometry. Your inner self, the ego, the shadow, the dhamma, the anima and animus, the unconscious, the soul, the spirit, the active voice of the body which you associate with yourself is constructed through the microbial network comprising you and your environment. It develops over time and caters to social norms and the general health and well-being of your system. Personality disorders arise from unhealthy microbes and toxins, which can come in the form of direct toxins or based on the damage and violence of intention and abuse or neglect. Something in fermentation that would cause a bad batch and an infection. The microbial network reacts to the intention of energetic waves of thought, emotional mimicry, and cymatic resonance. Our personality is like a fermentation of the soul, grown from the ingredients and arrangements of memories, actions, and consequences of an intelligent and sentient microbiome and mineral body system. One personality is often thought of as standard. However, we alter our behavior based on the situation, going into personality trances and even discussing things amongst the self with multiple voices that can develop. These are usually described as thought forms. Sometimes this told us, it is the voice of God to some, the guardian angel to others. It is the spirits, ancestors, the universe, the guides, the divine, the muse. Multiple personality disorder and schizophrenia, possession, monarch programming and hypnotic conditions to create alter personalities. All these descriptions are for the same phenomena, one that is hard to grasp but when the individual is seen as a singular entity form. The common philosophy of the ego self is insufficient because at no point are you alive without the inorganic or microbial geometries of your whole system. This challenges philosophy which claims that man is the measure, the person is a soul infused into a body, that the consciousness is greater than the body and separate from the mind and the body. All of those systems are the same. We are a collective of microbial intelligence and living animistic stones. Many voices can form in us. Voices of reason, voices that oppose us, 
voices that challenge us, voices that torment and mind control us. These can be gained from meditation and self inner dialogue through trauma and mental illness, hypnosis and chemical neurotransmitters, through mycotoxins and gut infections and fungal overgrowth and social conformities. The emotional type you expressed reveals your ideas, desires, and feelings. These projections of light formed by the geometric construction of your face, displays your personality. In other words, your face mimics your emotions, dictated by the molecular composition and changing energy of your emotions, creating personality. Pain, sadness, and beauty are inextricably linked. The conditions of changing emotions result from a microbial disposition, as any structure in the universe is composed of its microscopic parts. Fungus are the architects of beauty in nature. They drive and cultivate most other organisms, creating the nature around us. As in humans, the feelings of sorrow happen commensurate with the introduction of fungus in the body, causing microscopic changes which reverberate into the whole. The shadows, lines, intensity of expressions, the quality of depth described in beauty, qualities which extend and describe beyond the surface level, hence the term deep. The layering of microbial fungus creates such a dynamic depth. The subtle influences of emotions and physical expression are altered by fungus. Gazing at beauty, one often feels the enormity, supernatural, and inherent wonder when seeing beauty and sadness. The same feeling one gets around a moldy food, a mushroom, a mildew infested house, a demonic presence, a beautiful person. It is the fungus which inspires such vague spiritual and magical sensations in all qualities of life as demonstrated through the ancient understanding of this microbial force. As the architects of beauty, a forest is only as magical as its fungal activity. On the microscopic level on humans, while they drain and siphon symbiotically, they project beauty from us. That is how beauty, sadness, and pain are tied together through the mycelium print of our bodies, garnered throughout a lifetime.
patterns of microscopic morphology builds a face, a body, a behavior. Your character. As children, the system mimics those around it. It learns and imitates what it sees, even to the point of looking or acting just like its inspiration. Humans and many other plants and animals are changelings. Mimicry is an ability of microorganisms to alter behavior, to blend in with those around them. This inherent plasticity of molecules allows for humans especially to take on other forms, whether it is reptiles, leopards, birds, wolves, fish, or mushrooms. The ancient practice of mimicry is called shamanism. The characteristic archetypes of an animal can be mimicked. In attunement with the celestial bodies in order to communicate with the desired animal or else take on its attributes for increased power, strength, dexterity, or whatever quality the particular mimicked animal is thought to possess. This was integral to ancient man's survival from predators, and was the foundation for religion. The zoomorphism of gods who ruled over various forces of nature, from plants to weather. Mimicry was used in war and battle, and animals, whether real or mythological, were given as nicknames. The lion heart, the bull, the demon, strong as an ox, sly as a snake, the rat, wolf warriors, jaguar warriors, and so on. Mimicry does not take place on the macro, but on the microbial. The individual cells and microbes morph through the will of the collective system. Shamans were likely female in most cases. There is an inherent connection between females and fungus. Feminine energy itself is aligned with the yin the moon, the night, the growth period of fungus as nocturnal microbes. The priestess, the witch, the shaman, these were roles almost universally occupied by women. The fungal creativity is primarily in potential energy, morphological capabilities. Fungus' architects and chemists allow for the building of new organisms and body parts in any given organism, including the production of offspring or birth, the seed of life pattern. Rearrangement of microbes is how faces are altered through time. It goes to follow that this can be used to intentionally change one's face. Humans are naturally suited for disguises. Of all the god archetypes through history, it is the trickster which is the most human. We read faces as a species. We rely on those faces to draw accurate conclusions of a person, from trusting them to loving them to being repulsed. 
Faces are easily mimicked. Impressions are easy for humans to do, much like the Mockingjay or Chameleon. It is the fungus in us that give our system its flexibility. Women, or those considered to have increased anima feminine qualities, naturally desire to change their face constantly. The application of such changes is usually called cosmetics. This is to align with the constellations, the cosmos, the root word of cosmetics. By repeating the pattern back into the stars, alternate personalities are able to be manifested and worn by the person wearing cosmetics. They order themselves based on those archetypal principles through the doctrine of geometries as it matches the stars. The most effective organism on the planet are fungus, from unlocking land as a terrain for organisms to evolve to, to building the foundation of an atmosphere, to mechanizing other organisms through symbiotic mimicry, ability, and communication. Life itself is under the influence and winds of fungus. Of all the microscopic organisms, Fungus has the strongest grasp on chemistry, astronomy, geography, and art. Incidentally, these are the muses, the demons, the fairies man has tried invoking for millennia to learn such knowledge. No great artist, musician, thinker, general, inventor, mathematician, scientist, alchemist, priest, no one that is considered by history to be great, to be a master of their field or craft, blames themselves for their ability. They acknowledge their own hard work, but all of them speak of a greater pull, a force, an erudition that does not come from within. They feel at the mercy of some inexplicable, some fate or intelligence or karma or energy that cannot be comprehended, only allowed in. Everything from sickness, illness, near-death experience, enlightenment, talent, there is a recognition and acknowledgement of that which is speaking through them, the muse or demon ancient lore. Buckminster Fuller discovered the 64 tetrahedron after a period of his life in which he was about to kill himself, until a voice from within, but not his own, stopped him. It said, You do not belong to you. You don't have the right to take your own life. You belong to the universe. 
You are significant and you have a role to fulfill. You have to use your experiences and intellect to serve others. Rene Descartes had a similar experience. Although his was just a vision in, in a dream in which the angel of truth told him nature can be conquered through number and measure. Perhaps a future documentary would be suitable in creating a catalog of experiences like those from famous historical figures and a collection of anecdotes from contemporary people. The possibility of your own noesis and erudition is no less valid. You are not insane for having an experience outside of explanation. You are insane for believing all that you can visibly see are the only explanations of this world. What those people did, what all mankind has owed for their knowledge and skill has been the microscopic organisms. The mycelial consciousness, the web of information existing as a grid on the earth, an electromagnetic flower forming the basis of God, the collective unconscious and the experiences described in all the previous parts of this movie. The esoteric knowledge of mankind, to be infected and sick near death or immersed in psychotropic chemicals, to be dreaming or in a trance, to be possessed in the mind, to be in the deep stage of meditation, to be in a fog, to be mentally ill, to be overcome with religious fervor, to be psychically attuned or metaphysically sensitive. To be a witch or shaman, a priest or alchemist, the very concept of altered states of consciousness is misleading. There is only one altered state of consciousness with many ways of reaching it. There is the conscious, and then there is the altered conscious or subconscious. This is the microscopic esoterica. It is connected to the Earth soul, built of electricity, waves, particles, and fungus. All memory of Earth exists as a collection of data by fungus whose probing mycelium can and do tap into the grid of electricity, the cymatic rock astrogeometry that is the Earth's soul. The microscopic esoterica is the knowledge and creative force of the planet, its memory and formation. This is only the beginning, the foundational research from which all knowledge can be obtained. The starting point is the microscopic esoterica, encoded into all things and therefore all things can be sources of this esoteric knowledge. This is what it means to be connected to nature, God, or erudition. If you close your eyes and meditate, 
you can begin to see the microscopic esoterica.